green juice. Get you healthy, y'all. Hey guys, welcome back to Essence of Brit. This ring light is great with the lighting, but the glare is just terrible. So just bear with me. But I am here with a video on how I taught myself ballet at 24 years old. And I really wanted to share with you guys because I realized it's been a very inspiring journey for myself. But for a lot of other people, it's been giving them a lot of inspiration. So how did I learn? How did I teach myself ballet? Yeah, I always wanted to learn but I was never pushed. I was in dance for a little bit as a child and I was too shy, like chickened out and I quit after like two weeks. And I guess it resonated with me, like, you know, oh, I wish I could go back or I wish I knew what I knew now. So that was the motivation. I love movement in general. And I learned that I, I really admire contemporary dance. And I like the idea of choreographing. I also like to choreograph I have it in me. I knew, I always knew I had it in me. And I just said, okay, this is it. Like, I have to go for it. So I said to myself, if I'm going to take a class, I'm going to be prepared. I went into this research mode. You can look up anything on ballet, anything that will break it down. And you can practice in your room. It's so easy. A few things I made a priority to learn are the vocabulary, the first through fifth positions, and the dance attire. So vocabulary, as you know, Ballet originated in France, King Louis V, I believe, and a lot of the movements came from, which I found very interesting from my course, I learned that ballet came from the tight corsets that they, they would wear and the tight clothing that they would wear, closeness, the tightness, the sharp movements, all of those things were really because they couldn't breathe in those clothes. So all of those movements were specifically up right up tight because of the clothing, which I found pretty cool. Everything is in French. All of the vocabulary terms for ballet, all the dance moves are in French. It's very important to learn the vocabulary because the professors, the instructors, the dance instructors are not going to shout out dance terms in English. It's all in French. Um, I want to share some of the words that are the most important and basic words that everyone knows and that you should know. There's plié is to bend, relevé is to rise, fondu is to extend, glissé is to glide, piqué, 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 piqué is to prick, coupé is to cut, fondu is to melt, frappé is to knock or strike, Rond de jambe is around the leg, circle of the leg. A few more of my favorites are changement, saute, arabesque, and passe de cheval. The meaning of the words are a description of the action. So if you want to use pique is to prick. So that is the action of pricking your foot up and down. And plié, as we all know, is the most common and basic warm-up and dance moves in ballet it is the action to bend and fold into this grand plié which is uh, a full bend into the floor and the demi plié which is a half bend so the five positions of ballet are first position second position third position fourth position and fifth position. The most common move, the most common positions used are fifth position. Most of my warm up dances were in fifth position. Those are basically the things that I pre researched. I pre researched how to pronounce them, how to learn them. I wrote them out, the definitions, the movement itself. You should know what it looks like so you have an idea of how to perform it um, on command. And another thing that I researched was because I intended to take a course eventually and ballet is a very, very formal, strict form of dance. It's very different from other dance genres. So most ba ballet courses do require a uniform. You have your bodysuit, you have your tights, and you have your ballet shoes. So now I wanted to know exactly what I needed and exactly what to get. And I looked up different types of ballet courses. Some were casual and some were very, very formal. The formal courses will require you to wear bodysuit, tights, not leggings, tights, 
and the shoes. And in other courses, you can wear a bodysuit, you can wear a tank top, you can wear that with leggings, that with shorts. And essentially, you'll always have your ballet shoes because you do need them. Shout out to Miss Alti. Her videos are really great for beginners. And she has way more than just ballet. So check her out. She's really cool. And I think it was one of her videos where I learned the difference, the types of brands of ballet clothing and material. I went a little more traditional route. I got myself this bodysuit. These are my Capizio ballet slippers, my ballet shoes. So with the shoes, I was trying to research what kind to get. So as a beginner, they recommend either, either canvas material, which is this, or leather material. Leather is a little more um, harder. It's harder and it's more structured around the foot. So you can perform your moves with more support. This is pretty much like dancing barefoot, but with more support. The material is so thin. I was told leather is, I read that leather was easier, but then I was told that you're just as good with canvas. And I actually enjoy canvas because it really helps you. You can see your arch, you can see the arch in your foot and you can practice and you can feel lighter on your feet almost. Bodysuit and my shoes are both Capizio. I actually, you can order Capizio online. You can go to any dance shop. And I specifically went to a Capizio dance shop. So I wanted to, get the best for the best. There are a whole bunch of other brands though, but Capizio is the most well known. And I went into a store because I wanted to get fitted. I was gonna just order it online, but I really wanted to get fitted and make sure I was doing the right thing. So the class, as I was mentioning, um, I ended up finding, if you guys are in New York City, Perry Dance in Lower Manhattan is a really good dance, co um, dance company that offers absolute courses and the and the instructors are great the courses the course was an absolute beginner ballet so like i mentioned i've taken a modern absolute beginner modern course two years ago and it was a disaster because it says absolute but it's really for dancers who already have experience they're just taking ballet for the first time or really diving into it so i was surrounded by other dancers who already have experience and the only one who has no experience assuming that that was the point of the course and it was i was just making a fool out of myself trying to keep up with these people and i remember that that discouraged me i remember that for sure it discouraged me and that's the reason why i did all this research is because i said to myself i want to be more prepared better prepared for this course I don't want to have a repeat of that modern class. So I did research and practice so that I would be able to keep up. And long behold, I did. I kept up and I stopped worrying so much about not keeping up. You know, everyone's at their own pace. Everyone learns differently. I picked up really quickly. To my surprise, I did really well. And I didn't see myself any different from the other dancers. We were all learning the same thing. Everyone just has their own flavor and their own pace. So find a class that offers an absolute beginner. I took a workshop. So my workshop was five weeks and they jam packed all of the important essentials to learn about ballet in those five weeks, five, six weeks. And it was great. Once a week, an hour and a half, you learn a lot and you're drilled. And it really does help when it's a workshop. But if you're taking courses that are scattered, those are good too. Just keep up with them once or twice a week, if you're depending on your your desire to learn and how much time you have in your hands. Most dance course, all dance courses start with a workout. They'll do according to the type of dance. So for example, for modern, I had an actual workout. It was a dancer's workout. We worked on legs, core, we did yoga moves, we practiced balance, flexibility, and strength. For ballet, it was completely different this time. We started and warmed up with Pilates. And I was very confused because I said, why aren't we working out our muscles? And Pilates is a really, really like such an intricate move, an act of movement and exercise and putting resistance on the on the muscles. It's it, it incorporates everything that there is about ballet into muscle um, muscle strength, muscle memory, 
and flexibility. Um, Pilates really helps you to use the movements of ballet with turnouts and, and rotation and stretching, a lot of stretching, a lot of stretching, a lot of core. It's all core. You have to keep your balance. Pilates movements are very slow. They're very slow. So you need to keep your balance and you have to have a steady core to keep yourself up. You'll do a warm up with plies and you'll do a bar warm up. So a lot of bar work is in beginner courses. The best way to be a a ballet a ballerina is to be bougie b for ballerina b for bougie because all the movements is just bougie <laughs> what did i learn from this course um i learned a lot about posture um there are a lot of moves that require you to really focus on your core and to engage your core in everything that you do you have to have the right posture shoulders down core intact arms up arms extended elbows pointed up chin up and overall you learn the grace there's so much grace and and just fluidity in being a ballerina there is the fluidity in your hands and your arms everything must be soft so my experience overall, if I can compare it to the modern course experience, this was a much better experience. I had a better mindset. You have to put yourself in the mindset that you can accomplish whatever your goal is. In this case, it was to learn ballet at the right pace with the right amount of comfortability and confidence so that I can really achieve, you know, to be that ballerina. One thing that I was concerned, I was always concerned about, but specifically within ballet, I always have to give you guys the black perspective. So being black in dance is not easy from what I've seen. I even researched that too. It's just as important. I saw a couple of documentaries, a couple of interviews of some black ballerinas. The only black representation, at least for me, so this can show how much representation is out there because as far as I'm concerned, everyone praises Misty Copeland. That is our black representation, but I'm looking for people that look more like me. And I can tell you for a fact, representation is the reason why a lot of young girls don't pick up on ballet or certain type of dance genres on their own like yeah maybe your mom put you in it maybe you come from a family of dancers whatever the case may be i could tell you for a fact that was probably a driving reason that i didn't i didn't know it but i know it now as an adult that that was a reason that i never looked into really pursuing dance as a child because it was never represented properly for people of color now as an adult i take color into consideration to everything that i do Am I going to be in a safe space? Am I going to be comfortable? Am I going to be around other people of color? So I try not to worry about these things too much because at the end of the day, you're doing something for yourself and it's for you that it matters, not the judgment and criticism of other people. It's on you. So I did put that out there, but I also keep it in my back pocket so that nobody tries me, you know? Um, I, I never encountered any problems, any form of discrimination but I know there are stories of people that have there are stories of people that have been told um black girls you know ruin ballet and they the bodies don't develop well because you have to be skinny and petite to do ballet and we have more curvaceous bodies I've been in a lot of situations where I was the only black girl so you don't really realize it until you're older it's like okay I'm the only one but like hmm I have to be careful. We need to continue because we need representation. So if everyone thought like I did and just didn't join ballet or didn't progress in the sport, then there would be no representation. So just remember, there are people before us and after us. We need to maintain and create that legacy. So that's my PSA for black girls looking into ballet. Um, my experience, my research, and my advice. And then lastly, I want to talk about my goals. My goals, like I said, I want to go on to contemporary. I really 
love contemporary, just the, the freeness in contemporary. But I enjoy expressing through dance, the music, the emotion that brings, that comes from the music, and just telling a story with your body. That is what I love. But my problem is, I just be freestyling all the time and I can't put the damn choreography together. So that's why I want to take a class and learn the foundation and be more stable in that. Quick tip, did you know dance clothes and shoes and tights are made to match skin? Because when you're on stage, you're supposed to look like, everything is supposed to look like it's your skin. So what colors do we have? We have white, we have tan, and we have light baby pink and hot pink. And then we have traditional black. But the baby pink, the tan, and the white are all meant to match Caucasian skin. And there has never been anything till someone finally decided to make dance attire in our skin tone. And I've never seen anything so beautiful, to be honest. I don't think I'll be a professional dancer, but at least I can say that I followed my dreams which was to learn dance. The biggest message of this video is that it's never too late. I have never taken a ballet class. I'm 24 years old and I just took a ballet class and I just started to learn the basics. Most girls my age and in my group and my circle, they've been in dance when they were younger so they have the foundation. I don't. And what, but what I do have is a natural dancer's body. I have a natural dancer's grace and essence and just like that mindset and the urge to dance and the creativity to make the moves. The biggest thing about ballet and most dance genres, you learn these things when you're five and you become a professional by the time you're 10 and you're competing for slots in the biggest academies by the time you're 13, 14. And then you're already a professional dancer dancing in big Broadway shows by the time you're 18, 20. And then after that, that's the start of your career. That's the timeline for a dancer. That's why it's so discouraging to start now because you're like, damn, I should have started when I was five. Why, what makes me think I'm going to be any good now in my late 20s? There was a 70-year-old woman in my class. That, if that's not motivation enough, like, come on, man. That's all I have for you guys. Uh, join me on my next video. Keep up, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, subscribe for new videos. Leave a comment for suggestions of any other type of content or topics that you want to hear from. I like to put myself out there in order to inspire because everything I do is just so much fun. <laughs> Peace and love. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys on my next video.